financially successful guy who was dealing with um, unsurety, depression, and some of the techniques that I use are diet and training because a lot of depression has to do with your, your overall health condition. So um, in this particular case, I tried to explain to this individual how one of the main reasons is your spiritual status because your spiritual sometimes your your spiritual status is a reflection of your health status not always okay um, but why because if you let's say if your body is the type that is releasing cortisol which is gonna exacerbate estrogen which is for a man might cause depression well what can trump that your your religion if you understand that there will even though you might be huge no depression no depression or it's an internal war but on the outside no one can see that you're depressed because you know how to suppress it and cure it. In this particular case, I was saying this is one stage because the menhaj is what? Or the methodology is mind, body, and soul. You can't just train the body. You have to train the mind, the body, and the soul. So I said this is one issue. The other issue is you got to eat the right foods. You have to understand that this day and age that if you eat food that comforts you, that always everybody wants to eat food that tastes good but if it's always just the typical of what everybody else is eating it's going to damage you and not only is it going to damage you it's going to exacerbate these feelings of depression and unsurety so I wanted to use training to take him from A, B, C in stages to where he can see himself grow and improve which would indirectly consciously will give you confidence where you were lacking it before and also it would suppress these hormones and boost testosterone which is gonna help you burn fat gain muscle and you'll feel better about yourself you'll even feel more awake and more alive in life not drowning yourself in depression, drowning yourself in sleep, in laziness, in lethargy, being lethargic and slow and I can't move and all of these kind of things. Um, a lot of times what I've seen here, just because of me trying life coaching here doesn't mean that it, it's only about here is when once somebody saw what it takes to be better, they run from it. They got a taste of it and they're like, mm, I don't want to do that. I want a quick fix. And unfortunately, if you really understand this life, shortcuts and quick, fix, quick fixes are, are just that. They're a quick fix. They don't last. You still got to deal with the issue later. And sometimes people want to change their environment. And I have a cliche. Wherever you go, there you are. You can change the location, but if you didn't change yourself, 
you still got to deal with you. You still got to deal with your issues. So, this is also proof to the people who will hear this that wealth and money cannot buy you happiness. It can pass time easier, but it can't buy you happiness. And real happiness comes from within. You can find a, 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 a family who lives in a mud house. They made their house from mud. They grow their own foods. They, they have very little money. But they're happy. They're happy. They're content. Satisfied. They're satisfied. I'll tell you about myself. I've been working hard ever since I stopped teaching. Working hard in sports and in the gyms to try to do this for people. And most people run away from it. I lost a lot of money. I've had people who have money who didn't pay me. My efforts in the gym, I don't want to stop them, you know, uh, because they, I'm seeing people, even though I'm not making money, I'm seeing people benefit, you know, um, and I'm having an effect on people, even if I don't get the recognition or the financial gain. Uh, so the, you know, that's what I want to say. About. So w what are you looking for, you know, to, to, to continue your activities, your sport activities and helping people and specifically? Well, you know, to be honest, I would love to have a sponsor where, you know, um, sponsor the channel, sponsor my activities, uh, in exchange for advertisement or exchange for work, wherever, you know, I, I you know, um, I would like to create a dream team. I don't want to, I'm not the guru, you know what I mean? I would like to collect valuable minds, important, really talented people who love people. See, I'm a, I'm a humanitarian, I'm, I, 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 and I believe being a good Muslim makes you a humanitarian. You want to see people improve their lives. You want to see people get better. You know what I mean? So that's what I'm looking for. I want a sponsor. Uh, why? Because I suffered. I lost thousands trying to show people there's another way. If it, Whether it's the guys that are on steroids and hormones and all this other stuff, I want to show those guys there's a clean way to be. You can't have artificial aggression. Fake muscles and fake performance is not going to last you long. I want to show kids that you can be a good Muslim and have fun, enjoy sports, enjoy life. You don't have to be this way or that way. We're, we're the middle nation between the two extremes. You know what I'm saying? I want to show uh, women and children that you have to exercise, you have to be role models for the children. You have to guide them. I want to show athletes the hard work that it takes to write your name in history. Even if it's just a small thing, you still did it. You wrote your name in history. You broke a record. You did this. You did that. So um, it, takes, it, sometimes, it takes money. It takes support. Uh, um, uh, so you know that's that's what it is. I'm not I'm not chasing fame. I'm not chasing fame because I had my fame already. I need a sponsor. You know I sponsored myself for about four years, and the reason why I was willing to put my money on myself because I know what I can do. You know I I, I learned what I needed to learn, and I went through the things that I needed to go through to come to this point to be able to show a society where. It's now just opening to all the sports. You know what I mean? So, yeah, you know, my thing is, I, I, you know, I need a sponsor. You know, I would love a sponsor uh, to to work with me, and to work with us, I should say, and also not not just me. You know, I want to create a dream team to where we can do all of these things: life coaching, counseling, uh, training in the gym, strength and conditioning, boxing, whatever it is. You know, I want to get I want to get the right people together. To, to be different, you know? I'm not trashing the gyms here in, in Jiddu or in Saudi Arabia, but pretty much every gym is doing the same thing in some form. I wanna have 
a gym because look I grew up in a gym my home gym was walking distance from my house that gym the people that were in that gym I have to give them credit because part of them raised who this guy is today power lifting techniques the different workouts I learned it from from people and it was an environment where you might see a guy from the NBA you might see a couple guys from the NFL you're gonna find some college football players some some basketball players some track runners you're gonna see some lawyers some doctors I want to create that environment that when you go in the guy is not trying to sell you steroids or hormones he's trying to better your life you see what I'm saying and this is a sad situation that's one one thing we have to talk about later is about those reports that we got about the condition of the gyms in, in here in Saudi Arabia. You told me before that you met uh, Tony Robinson in person. Yes. Can you speak uh, about your experience? The first time was in high school. I used to be a part of a, a club inside our high school, which is a nationwide club. It's called Distributive Education Clubs of America, DECA. And basically what DECA was, it was um, a jump start into the business world and companies used to have little projects that they would give the college students and over the course of a quarter or a semester we would work on projects to present to the companies and it was a competition between high schools so my team when I say my team I'm not talking about my high school my class there were teams in this class but my specific team a three-man team we went to nationals in the process of that, one of the conferences, we, we met Tony Robinson, or we listened to his lecture, and afterwards, you know, we got to meet him and talk to him and ask him questions and stuff like that. You told me before he said a quote, I'm not your guru. I'm just uh, telling you what you need to know. Actually, he told me, he told us, I'm telling you what you should know. I'm not your guru. I'm telling you what you should already know already. But because the way society is designed, important information sometimes get lost. I respect the guy, but unfortunately most people that listen, I remember when I first came to Saudi Arabia and people taught me, told me about Tony, I was like, man, I've seen the guy in person three times. You're not supposed to take what he say like it fell from the heavens. His information is supposed to spark you. It's supposed to spark you and get you rolling. So that's what I can say about it. You know, I, I, I enjoyed it. Um, he's a very impactful speaker. He speaks with a lot of, uh, he's a very uh, compassionate and passionate speaker, full of information. You worked in a social uh, services. Can you talk about it in and out of prison? Okay, if I take the wide meaning of social services, I think, uh, I think I'm forgetting something, but I think the first, uh, I was a volunteer chaplain. What that meant was I would go into the prison. I had to be trained first, and I, had to, I would go into the prison I would drive like it, I think round trip it was like 200 some miles. Um, I would drive to the prison and basically walk the tiers of the prison and talk to the prisoners. Um, eventually I got hired as a, as a, as a chaplain by the state and um, I became the Muslim chaplain for a particular prison. And what that consisted of was I used to just provide the Islamic materials for the prisoners, and and not just Muslim prisoners. Uh, I used to uh, uh, conduct the Friday services or Juma prayer, and um, after that I used to give a, a lecture, and then after that I would walk all through the prison. Um, minimum security, medium security, maximum security, death row, go to the infirmary where all the uh, medical cases is, and I even would go to the um, uh, protective, I think they call it protective custody, where the um, people who may have told on another person, and I would, I would, Switch. yeah, yeah, you know, I would go to all these different parts of the prison and basically just conversate with them, you know, see what their needs were and, and uh, help them process things. And that would be even non Muslims. In fact, um, one of the groups that really liked me to come around. Uh, in uh, administ administrative segregation, which is uh, a prison inside the prison. Uh, it's a really sad area to go because you see humans actually turn into human animals. And what I mean by animals is like 
to be in such a tight space, you can only get out, I think, uh, every day or every other day for like 45 minutes. And it's a very tight space. So you saw, I mean, if you've ever been to a zoo and see the, the lion or the tiger just when their brain goes out, I've seen humans like that. But one of the groups that used to like, like me to come by was the Aryan Brotherhood, which is typically a racist group. But when they used to see me, uh, they would always get happy. And I would talk to them as well. I would talk to any prisoner who wanted to, 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 to talk. And one of the things that I, uh, I, I used to do is help them process why they were in prison. And that, you know, okay, you have to, you're in prison now. You have to understand that you're in prison and you have to now make the best of this time. Meaning, you need to improve yourself as a human being and, 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 and progress even though you're in this negative environment. Did you see any hopes in the prisoners? Absolutely. I saw, actually, there, I knew, I met some prisoners that, even though they didn't have the correct pronunciation, I met prisoners that memorized the whole Quran. I met, met prisoners that learned Arabic. I met prisoners that were basically lawyers inside of prisons. They learned the law. Um, I, I, I met several very intelligent people in prison. I mean, highly intelligent people. One of the guys I used to visit, he was a multimillionaire, highly intelligent, and also a very strong person. I, I, this guy had like six, seven heart attacks in prison and was still, you know, moving around in prison. Back to your original question, the other social services, I worked in uh, group homes. Group home is, is uh, basically uh, kids under the age of 18 that have a bad living environment. Maybe their parents have psychological issues, maybe their parents are on drugs, or maybe then the kids have psychological issues and the parents can't handle them. So I worked in a group home, more than one group home, um, just dealing with people's problems, man, basically. And I went through a lot of different training to, to be able to do that. Uh, learning the difference between mental disabilities and behavioral disabilities and deviant behavior, psychological problems. Uh, I deal with kids that, you know, had all different kinds of different issues, whether they be related to sex, really related to, like I said, mental issues or, or psychological issues or, you know, all kind of different issues. Uh, you mentioned that there is a lot of uh, intellectual people in the prison. You know, yeah. uh, uh, from a society perspective, uh, when they hear the prison or when they see prisoners, you know, they, they think about uh, crimes and horror people, bad people, uh, but they don't see any good you know, in that, that facility. I watch a documentary I remember about uh, the professor, the ba basketball uh, entertainment uh, player. Uh, he went to one prison. And he said, before I have idea, and after I visit the prison, uh, there is a lot of uh, smart people there, a lot of good people there. Uh, he, they they, they, they want to show uh, positivity. So, what's your comment on that? Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, um, you're going to find that. A lot of people who go to prison, they take it upon themselves, they take it upon themselves to better themselves. Um, whether it in, in various different areas, exercise, uh, learning something new, learning a trade. Um, it's not all bad. It's not all bad. In fact, um, sometimes the drive back from the prison, I would be crying. I, or in the times I didn't cry, I have a knot in my chest on the way home. And the reason why is because I'm like, this guy is special, man, and he's in prison, you know. It was tough to, 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 to see these beautiful people not have their freedom. You know, I didn't, as a, as a counselor or as a chaplain, I didn't get into, unless they shared it with me, I never asked a person why they were there. In some cases, I knew because they shared it with me, but... I wasn't so caught up on why they were there. My thing was, who are they as a person? 
and I saw, like I say, a lot of beautiful people, a lot of beautiful people in, 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 um, in prison, uh, a lot of beautiful people. And my father was uh, uh, a correction, we call a correctional officer, and he retired, and he used to tell me the same thing. You know, uh, I think my father worked that job 25, 30 years, you know, and um, he used to say the same thing. What about the people that uh, they got uh, a life in prison? Yeah. Uh, how do they feel about themselves? You know, I'm not going out of the prison, so am I gonna gonna stay good till, till, till the rest of my life, or I'm gonna be a criminal? You know, I'm gonna kill everybody mentality. Uh, you basically ran into those kind of people. Well, I went to death row. I actually actually visited the people who are actually have a date that they're gonna kill him, oh. okay? Can you speak about it? Uh, well, I'll ask your first question. The people who got life, it's different. You have those who wanna fight their case. They believe that they were uh, unjustly convicted, and so they spend a lot of time in the, they have a library, a legal library, a law library, and they spend their time working on their cases, trying to file motions and different things to, to get what's called an appeal on their case. Um, some, I, I personally didn't meet them. I knew who they were, because you need to be aware. You know, I had no security with me. I used to walk, you know, in a white fold amongst the prisoners, anybody could have attacked me at any time. And actually, I had a hit put on me. Literally, a hit means somebody put some money down to attack me or kill me. It happened in, in, in that prison. Um, uh, but it didn't stop me. I never walked in fear. I never had any security. Um, but I was aware of those guys that People told me he's a lifer and you need to be careful, you know, uh, if you're in certain areas. Um, some guys are, you could say, they exist in the prison prison lifestyle, but should it, a situation arise, because they have life, they, they're going to go all out, meaning they're going to probably, probably attack lethally. Maybe a person would die from that attack. Um, there are those kind of prison, and sometimes the prison administration knows they're like that, so they kind of isolate those guys, but sometimes not, you know. And the last, the other one is about the death row people. Me, when I went to talk to the death row people, I try, I, try, I walked vi um, very lightly. I didn't want to say anything wrong. I didn't want to approach them in the wrong way. So basically, I used to just go and have a, what, 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 what we would call a normal conversation. I just wanted to have a normal conversation with those guys and none of them ever talked about their case or anything like that. And to be honest, most of them seemed to be in good spirits, you know, they, they weren't like down or anything like that.